www.thinkandgrowthpodcast.ca. This is just a very quick follow-up video to this morning's video where I recorded myself in my van reading an email that I got from a young lady who had stated that she had been felt up, groped, and ejaculated on on the 8.30 a.m. Spadina train, and no one said a word to help her. Look, um, I've had some pretty angry phone calls in that one today. Uh, There was a gentleman from... Uh, the eastern part of Toronto, who gave me a call to state that he actually called the police on her behalf and filed the report. And thank you very much for that. Ladies, uh, you're going to have to file police reports whenever this happens, okay? I know it's embarrassing. It's humiliating. And uh, and I can share with you what I mean by that. I mean, I remember being in in grade school and getting my butt kicked by bullies. And, they're, and you're on the ground crying your, your masculinity and your pride and your dignity have all been taken from you. I know, I, I was there, I know. But I'm not going to sit there and say that a punch in the face in grade seven is anywhere near as demeaning as a couple of disgusting Muslim creeps essentially jerking off all over you on a train. No, I would never say that. I'm just saying that I can relate a little bit to the humiliation the, and the dehumanization that you feel. I would encourage every woman out there, register your com- your complaint with the police. Whatever police force you need to speak to, you speak to them. Even if it's only a controller, you get a reference number. And this way here, what we have is the capacity for the police to identify a pattern. I know that they're not going to be able to do much after the whole incident is done about the incident itself, unless, of course, they were caught on camera doing this, which is what I hope happens here you still need to file that report. Let's keep the police informed so that there's a paper trail and that all of you out there are continuing to tell the police this is what's happening. They see a pattern. They can then at least look at a way to, if not stop it, slow it down, interfere with it, um, have it, or maybe quarter it. We want it to stop as much as possible. And the only way for you to do that is to actively start talking with them. Now, if you like... What you can do, any woman out there that's been felt up on a train by Muslims um, or any nightclub, train, bus, street, mall, water park, I don't care where, file the complaint with the police, get a copy of the police report, please send it to me and I'll archive it on freedomreport.ca. You can tell me if you want your name attached to it or not. I will do whatever you say because it's your privacy that you need to protect. And I don't mind sticking my neck out for any of you. I'm sorry that this event took place. Um, I'm I'm very happy that Canadians are responding with the correct emotional response, which is first anger and then secondly, a desire to help. So men and women, when you see women or anybody for that matter, even elderly men or boys or anyone that can't defend themselves being harassed, by these Justin Trudeau imports, Muslim imports, you have to get involved. Please, if anything, just take the hand of the person who's being harassed and march them away from the situation. There is no shame in running away. And believe me when I say this, I know how to fight. I've been trained in how to do it. And if someone pulls a knife on me, even though I know how to disarm them, I'm running away. I'm not taking the chance that the guy who pulled the knife is a better fighter than me. And I have nothing to prove when that guy has that knife and he wants to come at me with it. There's nothing to prove. I have nothing to gain. So I'm gone. I'm out the door. Run away yourself. Remember what I'm saying here. Leave the situation. But don't stand by idly, coward in a cowardly fashion, gutlessly, and watch Muslims destroy the pride of and the dignity of your fellow Canadians. Please, I'm asking you, please. Kevin J. Johnston, freedomreport.ca.